Um, so what's new in Utah? Uh, we're kind of fighting the same battles you guys are. We don't have near enough money for our equipment. Um, our dump trucks are literally falling or rotting apart, as you'll probably see in some of these pictures. Um, we've been trying hard using repair costs and other things to try and show how bad the condition of our fleet is, and we just don't seem to be getting anywhere. And so we kind of tried to try a different approach. Apparently our upper management was not too unhappy with how much we were spending. We spent about six million a year in repairs. Um, and that's not all on our plow trucks, but I would say probably a good 75% of it is. That's mostly what we fix. So we decided and came up with a condition assessment program. And what it kind of does is it kind of evaluates things that you, the work you're gonna put off. So if you got a rusty cab, you're really not gonna probably take that truck out of service, but that repair still needs done. And so we started accumulating the data. We come up with this report card. We actually hired Henry and uh, Dennis worked with this. Um, at the time, I think it was AMA Associates, but now it's the Kircher Group. And we come up with some criteria. Um, it's mostly like we evaluate the dump body, the cab, the floor, the firewall. Um, I'll show you some pictures. We actually have some firewalls where you have spray foam that's holding the firewall inside the truck. So we've got some pretty bad stuff where that you can't really show on an expense report because we didn't really fix it, but it's in total dire need of being fixed. So this is kind of the uh, score sheet. And we have two guys go out. Uh, we had a, our local guys, uh, we have six regions in Utah. And we had the local guys, the shop guys, go through and do their own evaluations. <clears throat> and after the first year, we figured out that what I think is a D-grade truck, you may think it's a C-grade truck, and you may think it's a B-grade truck. And so the first year, the data was kind of inconsistent. And what we ended up doing is we have two guys that work out of my office that purchase equipment. They go around and meet with the crews yearly. So now as they go out and do their inspections with the crews, they meet with them or they do this condition assessment as they're going. This was last year, but this is the grades of our overall trucks. And keep in mind, these are like when there's failures there, it's nothing safety related. It's not brakes. It's not wiper motors. It's not anything that affects the drivability of the truck. It's more like the dump bell's got a hole in it or the cab's got a hole in it or the windshield's literally falling out type of repairs. And then we kind of broke it down by region. Region one's kind of northern Utah, region two's central Utah, three's in the middle and then four's down across the bottom. And then we broke it down by cost. So for each of those categories I had on the first slide, we went back through repair data and we kind of figured a high and a low. And we figured out where we were in within those grade ranges. So like for, I know a frame rail repair, we have the internationals with the nested C frame. So it's a channel inside a channel. And it rotted the, bottom, or the top channel out. So now we have cracked frames down both sides of our dump trucks. Well, it failed the safety inspection, so we ended up having to try and fix it. So I know through example, for us to fix that, that was $50,000 for them to slide new frame rails in there. So to me, that would be a failing frame rail. Where we have other frame rails that are just rusty, you can see the pitting and it's about ready to pop through. That may be more a C or a D type of uh, grading. And then we've associated cost with past repairs to kind of put a number to what it would cost to take this truck up to a C grade. Our, our ideal is a C grade. We know we're probably never gonna get to an A or a B, but so everything's shooting for a C. So as you can see, I can't see it very well, but I'm pretty sure that, <laughs> that number one is the dump body. So that's our biggest failure. And I can't see what the bottom is, but anyway, these are all these categories and they're ranked uh, by how many we have, and it will say a number out to the side. So these are like some of our examples. Uh, the bed on that truck, as well as the frame rail. Frame rail is totally gone for paint, but it's really probably not as structurally bad. Well, I think this is the one that has the dent right there by the rear hinge. 
where you can see that frame rail starting to collapse when they go to lift that bed. That bed has a potential of falling apart. Plus you can see the rust underneath the bottom of the bed. So if you took a, one of the welding hammers and hit the bottom of that bed, that's all gonna fall apart. So those are the kind of things we are trying to point out to our upper management. Look, just because this truck's rolling down the road does not mean it's a good truck. It'll do its job, yes, but it's not. We're still in trouble. There's still a tidal wave of repairs and money we need to deal with. Um, another one like this one on the right, the long seal, uh, or on your guys's, yeah, your guys' right. Those actually have holes right through them. So back, way back when on the 2000s, we used to do trapezoidal uh, long seals. I don't know why they picked that design, but man, I'll tell you what, they rot from the inside out. And you'll go and inspect a truck thinking that frame rail's fine. You hit it with the hammer, the hammer goes right through it. So it's totally, so now what we do is we cut these off and then put I-beams down the sides or on the long seals. Uh, we evaluate the hydraulic boxes. We have, uh, we've actually made some changes now. Our hydraulic boxes used to lay on the frame rail. And after we've been doing this inspection, we figured out, this picture probably shows a little better, that salt and water all sits down in that hydraulic box and it rents, uh, rusts out the bottom of that valve. So in doing this report, we figured out now we stick the hydraulic box and the hydraulic tank vertically right behind the cab. And so they're up out of the weather. It helps drain oil to the pump. We were kind of starving our pumps. Uh, we're getting kind of better wear out of them. So some of our cab failures, I don't know, you can see the one on the far right, that's a hole right through the cab. If you stuck your hand in there, it'll go right through the cab on the passenger side. Hood mounts rotting off. The windshield frame, you can't really see it, but that windshield's not held, oh, I'm sorry. The windshield's not held in there really tight. They ended up having to go through and cut that entire windshield out and replace that frame. Pin failures, um, which is kind of due to lack of grease, but as long as the guys can ride it down the road and it doesn't affect their steering, they don't seem to care. So we're looking at those things that they're not looking at or should be looking at and not. Uh, the spring hangers, another one, a maintenance item looked over. Yeah, the truck probably would pass inspection, but it isn't necessarily in great shape. So kind of in summary, uh, it's helped. We actually had uh, $10 million what we used to get, and then back in 2009, they cut us back to $6 million. So after creating this report, it actually helped us gain another $6 million this year. So we actually doubled our equipment budget this year through showing these kinds of failures to our upper management. So I'm thinking it's a success. They're saying it's gonna be year over year, but I've heard that before and don't think so, but. <laughs> Good job. All right. The preceding video was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found at tsp2.org. That's tsp2.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.